this evening. First, $100,000 relief for pensioners. Registration kicks off today for the much-anticipated one-time cash grant. Find out who qualifies and how to apply. Plus, heartbreaking tragedy. A devastating car crash claims the life of three family members on St. Cosper's Mission Trail. We hear from a grieving community. Also, new horizons in the Caribbean. Inter-Caribbean Airways launches direct flights connecting Guyana and Grenada. Discover what this means for tourism and trade and daylight robbery. An armed heist at a local supermarket leaves a community shaken. See the drastic CCTV footage and hear calls for action. Finally, tensions escalate in Georgia. Pro-European protesters and police clash for a fourth night. What's driving the unrest and what's next? Stay tuned. These stories and more coming up on tonight's Headline News Update. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for December 2nd, 2024. I'm Bibi Backus. Thank you for joining us. First up, the registration process for National Insurance Scheme pensioners to receive the one-off $100,000 cash grant began today, Monday, December 2nd. On Friday, the government published the official registration schedule, which will enable pensioners in the various regions to register while conducting transactions at their respective NIS offices. Registration will last from December 2nd to 6, 2024. Pensioners can register at various offices across Guyana, depending on their region of residence. Persons are required to present a valid national identification card or a valid passport to register and are only required to register once. President Dr. Mohamed Fanali announced the $100,000 one-off cash grant in October of this year. It is aimed at bringing significant relief to thousands of Guyanese. On Wednesday, the National Assembly approved a $30.5 billion supplementary provision to distribute these funds. Public servants and pensioners are among the first groups to benefit from the initiative. Additional registration locations for pensioners will be announced shortly. In other news, a head-on collision on St. Cuthbert's Mission Trail claimed three family members' lives, leaving the community in mourning. Dale Jarvis has more details. A devastating car crash on Sid Cuthbert's Mission Trail claimed the lives of three family members on Saturday, November 30th. The victims have been identified as 63-year-old Olive Andrews, her daughter, 29-year-old Athena Andrews, a mother of three and former Miss Indigenous Heritage pageant contestant, and her seven-year-old daughter, Emma Andrews. All three were residents of St. Cuthbert's Mission. The accident occurred around 6 o'clock p.m. at Four Mile, also known as Tail Creek, on the St. Cuthbert's Mission Trail. Reports indicate the Andrews family was returning to the village in a red car when it collided head-on with a white vehicle traveling in the opposite direction. Both drivers survived, while a baby boy and another passenger from the red car sustained injuries and were taken to the Diamond Diagnostic Center for treatment. The occupants of the white car, reportedly a driver and his father, were traveling to Georgetown when the crash occurred. Emergency medical technicians had to extract the Andrews family from the wreckage. The driver of the red car, who escaped with minor injuries, is being questioned by police as investigations continue. The tragedy has left the Sid Cuthbert's Mission community grieving the loss of a beloved family. Reporting for Headline News Update, Dale Jarvis. Thanks, Dale. A fatal crash on Washapon Road claimed one life and injured two others, prompting a police investigation into the tragedy. More from Malcolm Carter. A tragic accident early Sunday morning, December 1, 2024, on Washer Pond Public Road has left one dead and two others hospitalized. The collision occurred around 3.45 a.m. and involved a car, PAH 2213, driven by 21-year-old Ivor McNabb, a member of the Guyana Defense Force, and a motorcycle operated by 23-year-old Joel Nurse of West Wotuka, Wimsar. Ezekiel Smith, a 19-year-old pillion rider from the same area, tragically lost his life in the crash. Police reported that McNabb's car, traveling south, veered into the path of the oncoming motorcycle, resulting in a fiery collision. 
both riders were thrown from the motorcycle, sustaining severe injuries. Public-spirited citizens rushed all three victims to the Linden Hospital complex, where Ezekiel Smith was pronounced dead on arrival. McNabb remains hospitalized for chest injuries, while nurses being treated for fractures in both legs. The body of Ezekiel Smith is at the Linden Senior Citizens Association mortuary, awaiting a post-mortem examination. Police have launched an investigation into the incident. Reporting for Headline News Update, Malcolm Carter. Stick around when we return. Inter-Caribbean Airways launches direct flights between Guyana and Grenada. And armed robbery at local Chinese supermarket alarms South Rheinfeld residents. It's the most wonderful time of the year, and we've got the most wonderful deals. Get the perfect gift from Digicel. Grab the Samsung A05 for just $17,900, the A25 for $37,900, or treat yourself to the S24 Ultra for only $205,000. And that's not all. Every phone comes with a free 30-day data plan. Don't wait. These holiday savings won't last forever. Visit your nearest Digicel store today. Digicel, the network for everyone, everywhere. It's Christmas at Kisoon's Furniture Store. We are fully stocked for the holidays with a wide variety of furniture to choose from store-wide. Beautiful sofas, dinette sets, rugs, pillows, foam and hybrid cooling mattresses in all sizes. Beds in king, queen and single sizes and so much more. Come on down to our mega store or our Rob Street location. Merry Christmas from Kisoon's Furniture Store. We are back. Our holiday specials are here. From now until December 6th, enjoy our exclusive Christmas packages. Get one service free when you book three services. Complimentary mattress cleaning with any yard power washing service. Free small carpet cleaning with every chair set cleaning and steaming. Connect with us on Facebook and Instagram or visit us at 3430 Jacksonville, North Rumbles, or Georgetown. You can also give us a call on 689-7558-6460. Four zero five or six three nine six three six five. Start your holiday preparations early with Fortune Investment Company and let us make your season shine. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, ah! Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for do a surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money. You should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all we will be using peppies, black pepper, kasri, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, white spice, and our purpose seasoning. Next, this chicken that we marinate soak for all you want to know nothing with peppies, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and duck and plastic flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppies, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket, and she pop up by her nothing of things. She feel she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppies has a wide range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies, we put the pep back into your kitchen. Sneakly with a gift of sides from modern optical services. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Comic smiles make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226-1000.
1082. Welcome back. Inter-Caribbean Airways has launched direct flights between Chetty Chagan International Airport in Guyana and Morris Bishop International Airport in Grenada, marking a new milestone in Caribbean connectivity. The inaugural flight took off on Sunday with the twice-weekly service to boost tourism, trade, and cultural exchange between the two nations. The airline's latest route strengthens economic ties and promotes investment opportunities in sectors such as agriculture and manufacturing. Ghana Tourism Authority Director Komran Bash emphasized the synergy between Ghana's ecotourism and Grenada's reputation as the Spice Island calling the direct route a game-changer for travelers. Grenada's acting Prime Minister Andy Williams hailed the initiative as a symbol of regional collaboration and sustainable development. Inter-Caribbean Airways CEO Trevor Sadler reiterated the airline's commitment to enhancing Caribbean connectivity, noting that its 2021 launch of direct flights between Ghana and Barbados paved the way for this expansion. An armed robbery at a Chinese supermarket in Georgetown has heightened safety concerns. Police are investigating CCTV footage to catch suspects. More from Malcolm Carter. An armed robbery at the Kang Chinese supermarket on Arby Barker Road has left residents and business owners on edge after two gunmen struck in broad daylight on Saturday afternoon. The incident occurred around 4 p.m when the assailants reportedly disarmed security guard Lawrence Jacob of Force Defense Security Services before forcing him inside the store. They then robbed the owner of an undisclosed amount of cash. The brazen attack caught on security cameras shows the bandits brandishing handguns and piling their loot of cash and other items into a box before escaping on an XR motorcycle. The incident has heightened fears of rising criminal activity in the area. Business owners and residents are calling for improvised security measures to combat their growing threat of safety. Police are reviewing the CCTV footage and have launched an investigation. They are appealing to the public for any information that could aid in apprehending the suspects. Reporting for Headline News Update, Malcolm Carter. Thanks, Malcolm. One year after a tragic helicopter crash that claimed the lives of five high-ranking members of the Ghana Defense Force, families, relatives, and friends gathered to honor their service and sacrifice. However, the absence of an official report on the cause of their deaths has sparked controversy and questioned the lack of transparency. The memorial service held at the Yumaniyan in Kingston on Sunday was attended by President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, Prime Minister Brigadier Retired Mark Phillips, and other officials. The ceremony paid tribute to Brigadier Retired Gary Beaton, Colonel Michael Sherwood, Lieutenant Colonels Michael Charles and Sion Welcome, and Warrant Officer Class 2 Jason Khan, who died during a mission near the border with Venezuela. Despite the heartfelt tribute, the failure to release a formal investigation report into the crash has left many unsettled. The Bell 412 helicopter, which lost signal on December 6, 2023, crashed about 30 miles from the border, and it wasn't until December 7th that search teams found the wreckage with two survivors. The lack of closure has sparked the question, how can we truly honor their memory if we don't even know what happened to them? Calls for an answer are growing louder, urging the release of the details of the investigation. As the country continues to mourn their loss, the unanswered questions surrounding the crash remains a painful and controversial issue. Don't go away after the break. China's property market, new tax incentives help China's biggest cities. And Trump threatens 100% tariff on BRICS nation if they try to replace dollar. This Christmas, Digicel is bringing you the gift of millions. millions. Ten lucky customers will become millionaires for Christmas. Top up $1,000 or more for your chance to win $1 million. Turn your Christmas into a celebration of cash and cheer. Two new millionaires every week. Wait, wait, wait. The countdown to Christmas millions is on. Top up $1,000 or more today for your chance to win. Digicel, the network for everyone, everywhere. 
We are back. Our holiday specials are here from now until December 6. Enjoy our exclusive Christmas packages. Get one service free when you book three services. Complimentary mattress cleaning with any yard power washing service. Free small carpet cleaning with every chair set cleaning and steaming. Connect with us on Facebook and Instagram or visit us at 3430 Jacksonville, North Rumbles, Georgetown. You can also give us a call on 689 7558 6460. 405 or 639-6365. Start your holiday preparations early with Fortune Investment Company and let us make your season shine. It's Christmas at Kisoon's Furniture Store. We are fully stocked for the holidays with a wide variety of furniture to choose from store-wide. Beautiful sofas, dinette sets, rugs, pillows, foam and hybrid cooling mattresses in all sizes. Beds in king, queen and single sizes and so much more. Come on down to our mega store or our Rob Street location. Merry Christmas from Kisoon's Furniture Store. Sneak away with the gift of sight from modern optical services. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Common smiles make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226 Good, good, girl, forget things. What's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hello, my fellow TikTok followers. He is credit. And today, all we will be making Chinese noodles with peppies, chow mein, chicken fritters, and spice cake. For the noodles, all of these will be using peppies, black pepper, casserole, Chinese sauce, soy sauce, garlic sauce, paprika, Chinese seasoning, chow mein seasoning, fried spice, and our purpose. Season. Next, this chicken that we marinate it, soak for all you want to know nothing with peppers, green seasoning, miracle seasoning, pepper sauce, chicken seasoning, paprika, garlic powder, dark seasoning, black pepper, onion powder, and ginger powder, and document planting flour, and then this butter we make with this quick piece powder, and we fry, I mean, boil in oil. We serve with peppers, barbecue sauce. Radical went to the supermarket and she proper buy up nothing of things. She feels she alone can cook, but she wrote in even wrong. He shaped like a guy in a mop. Peppers has a wide <laughs> range of ingredients available at supermarkets nationwide. Peppies. We put the pep back into your kitchen. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Good evening. I'm Malcolm Carter and welcome to tonight's regional and international news. The Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribbean reports that the region's 2024 population reached 663 million almost 4% lower than 2000's forecast. This decline reflects faster than expected reductions in fertility and mortality rates, unanticipated migration flows, and the impact of COVID-19. The population is projected to peak at 730 million in 2053. Aging presents significant challenges, with the over 65 demographic expected to double by 2050, reaching 138 million. The maiden age has risen from 18 in 1950 to 31 in 2024, projected to hit 40 by 2050. ECLAC calls for improved health care, social protections, and policies addressing aging and gender disparities. U.S. President-elect Donald Trump has threatened 100% tariffs on BRICS nations if they pursue a rival currency to the U.S. dollar. Trump's social media posts warned against any move to reduce the dollar's dominance, targeting Brazil, Russia, China, and other BRICS members. His proposed tariffs are seen by some allies as negotiating tactics rather than firm commitment. Trump's economic strategy emphasizes tariffs to protect American jobs and generate revenue, but economists argue these taxes often burden domestic consumers. Similar tactics in his first term had mixed results, with many tariffs retained by President Biden. 
BRICS currency plans remain stalled by internal disagreements. Protests in Georgia have continued for a fourth night as pro-European Union demonstrators faced off against police. Hundreds of demonstrators and police officers have been injured, Al Jazeera's Dmitry Medvedenko reports. Water versus fire. A clash of the elements in Tbilisi. Protesters shooting fireworks. Police responding with water cannon. As well as tear gas. Demonstrators washing their eyes out away from the fray. Some tried to hide in churches. Others erected improvised barricades. Tension has been rising in Georgia for months. The opposition has accused the country of moving away from the path to join the EU and becoming closer to Moscow in its policies. I've been attending protests for quite a long time now and quite frankly it's been very tiring to see that our government does not hear what the people desire. I'm here for a very simple reason, to defend my European future and the democracy of my country. My country deserves to be free from the Russian regime that has haunted us for many centuries. And I believe that we need to get into Europe. That's why we are standing here and we are risking our lives, we are risking our health, but it, it's worth. The ruling Georgian Dream Party won a disputed election in October and says it will freeze EU accession talks for four years. President Salome Zorabishvili says the election was rigged and called for more protests. The president's role in Georgia has been reduced over the years to be mostly ceremonial. She said she wouldn't step down when her term ends this month, adding to the political rift in the country. The government says that's out of the question. The president has four Fridays left and she cannot get used to it. I understand her emotional state, but of course on December 29 she'll have to leave her residence and surrender this building to a legitimately elected president. As police dispersed crowds in the early hours of the morning, acts of protest and arrests continued across the city. Inspired by this video of a young boy throwing a bottle at police, hundreds of students refused to attend classes on Monday in a sign that the opposition is not backing down. Dmitry Medvedenko, Al Jazeera. New tax incentives are coming into force in a bid to help the property market in China's biggest cities. China has been dealing with a growing economic crisis following the collapse of property prices. Al Jazeera's Rob McBride reports. With some of China's most sought-after addresses, Shanghai has been weathering the housing property storm better than most. But even here, hit hard by the pandemic and the departure of many overseas workers, apartment prices and rentals have slumped. A lot of the of them is the move. Property agents across the city are hoping new incentives, like a reduction in transaction taxes on some larger apartments, will help a rebound in the market. They want to take advantage of incentives given by the government, so the whole property market is now very active and we have a lot of interest. Away from Shanghai, prospects for the housing market are far bleaker, in spite of measures such as cutting down payment requirements and easing restrictions on buyers. Years of overbuilding, with property prices only seeming to rise, have led to a massive bubble that's now a major drag on the world's second biggest economy. All of this comes as China is trying to transform its economy, no longer dependent upon the construction of massive housing and infrastructure projects towards a future high-tech society. But that means home buyers accepting the painful truth that the property bonanza is over. In this transition, one thing they get to do is to burst the housing bubble. In that regard, it's quite successful because the housing bubble is bursted. For China's government, focused on maintaining social stability, the challenge is avoiding the kind of sudden downturn that results in a traumatic upheaval. And they try everything they could to control the downturn in housing prices. But unfortunately, that means this housing decline probably will last for many years. 
that in turn threatening to Thanks, Malcolm. This brings us to the end of our regional and global news coverage. Up next is the 3D weather forecast. And that's it to be to headline news for this Monday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6 30 a.m. for a rebroadcast and at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.